everyone, I'm Carol Carnes, and this is Living Consciously. Well, we're calling our show today New Vision, and it's not about getting a new pair of eyeglasses. It's about having a new perception about almost everything. You know that old saying, today is the first day of the rest of your life? Well, think about it this way. Yesterday was the last day of your previous life, and that everything that has happened up until now is gone. Well, yes, we had to have a few memories. We have to know who we are and where we live and all that sort of thing. But imagine how liberating it would be if you and I could wake up each morning absolutely, gloriously present in this now moment, keeping with us only those things that support us, that help us to be happier, healthier, more loving, more prosperous. And we were able to completely release all of the old stuff that the mind likes to hang on to. It actually is possible to create some semblance of that in our life, but it takes a little work. Well, everything that's worth getting takes a little effort, doesn't it? And by effort, I mean determination, being willing to go through some of the steps or the techniques, if you will. I like to think of spirituality as a group of techniques that we use to access that greater mind that is not filled and cluttered up with a lot of nonsense. Um, I think I quoted Marcus Aurelius last week, but I'll do it again. He says, you know, the junk that clutters up your mind only exists there, right? See, it's not really real. It's just a cluster of ideas that we have held on to. So one of the techniques uh, is a very simple one for being really present now and pushing out those other old ideas. It's not suppressing them, it's kicking them out of our consciousness. You know, you can't really think more than one thought at a time. So what we want to do is think about now. And that means to get a new vision for everything. When we wake up in the morning, see the light coming in, maybe like we've never seen it before, but being aware of it and how it makes us feel. We're awake, we're alive, we're ready to have a new day, a new experience of being us. Now perhaps we hear some music and we think, wow, isn't that wonderful? How does that happen? You know, it is kind of an amazing thing. Or you see the color red or the color yellow, and you may have seen it a million times, but try to experience it as if you've never seen it before. You know, Alan Watts, the great Buddhist scholar and philosopher said, uh, the definition of a, of a philosopher is someone who can see an ordinary object like a bread box as if they've never seen it before and say, wow. You know, I was practicing this uh, over the years and one of the things I, I used to do when I drove a lot in California up and down the coast, I lived in the north, I went, I'd go down south to see my daughter all the time. So I was on Highway 101 a lot and I would practice <laughs> seeing myself hurtling through space in this tin box. And I'd say, isn't this amazing? You know, and, you know actually it really is. Uh, things like that, ordinary things, if we see them with new eyes, we stay fresher and more available to what's happening right now in us. You see, it's not just what's happening out there, but what's happening in us. Every day I write a, a blog called Living Consciously, and you can get it on Facebook. Be my friend, you can get it. But today I wrote about the, the old-fashioned kind of prayer where we would ask a outer God to intervene, to make something happen outside of us. And the new thought, spiritual mind treatment practice, is to use our higher mind to change those old ideas that don't serve us. So we're not asking for something outside of us, we're asking for something inside of us. And as a matter of fact, those of you who are Christian will remember this from Christian scripture. Heal me of my unbelief. So if you pray in the old fashioned way where you're ask, talking to God, that's okay. But ask for the right thing. Don't ask for a change in the outer world. Ask for a change in this world because everything proceeds from there. You know, if you really knew how powerful your mind was and that you're creating your reality with it, wouldn't you pay more attention to what you're thinking? Of course you would. But mostly what you're perceiving. 
And it, of course, it always begins with us. So what will we fill, fill F-I-L-L, today with? What are, what are the, the moments that make up this 24-hour period going to be like for us? Are we in one of those wait-and-see modes? Let's see what the world is doing. Let's see what the TV is saying. Let's see what, how people are reacting to me. Or are we going to go out in the world kind of filled with a resolve to see through appearances to what is inherent within it? And this brings up a, a big subject about things like lack or poverty or not enoughness, insufficiency, and most people have had some experience with that. But if you're looking at, and it could be your own bank account, right? If you're looking at something and seeing lack, stop in that moment and try to see what's in the midst of it or the core of it, what is behind the appearance of not enough, you will find the source of all things, infinite supply. And that the, at lack or poverty or insufficiency is simply a limited use of that supply, that power. Uh, nothing is hold, withholding it from us. We are hanging on to the perception that there's scarcity in the world and there's no such thing. We experience it, but it isn't a reality in and of itself. It's a limited use of supply, uh, that inexhaustible reservoir of energy that comes through us and turns itself into things and experience. So the same thing with conflict, you know, if you, instead of seeing, oh, this is a problem, you know, this is ugly, these people are fighting, try to see what's in the core of that, which is a desire for love. And behind the desire is love itself, pushing that person to attempt to get the good, they just don't know how to do it. Um, you know, there are, there are laws that support us, just like physical laws, the laws of physics, there are spiritual laws. And they, they govern how we see the world and they govern how we succeed in the world. There was a wonderful writer named John Randolph Price who passed a couple years ago, but he wrote some great books. He wrote a book called Nothing's Too Good to Be True about new thought spirituality that I'm, I'm teaching. And he also wrote in a book called The Abundance Book. And he cautioned us to understand spiritual law. He says, if you don't understand spiritual law, you tend to make up your own laws. <laughs> and they tend to be limited, you know. So if you don't understand uh, the law of supply, then you tend to make up laws that say there's not enough to go around. That's just the way, it's a law. It's a fact of nature. It's not true. There's plenty to go around. What's missing is a new vision about supply, about our shared experience on planet Earth, about distribution, about source. So let's get out of the law-making business and instead learn to love the law that's actually supporting us right now, this day. This is the, this is the new vision day, right? We're going to see through the appearances and judge righteously. All we're seeing, and that's just about true about everything, because uh, everything is a limited use of something infinite. So no matter what we're doing as human, no matter how broad and how expansive our life is, it's still a limitation because there's, there's always more possible. So it isn't about getting something in the outer world, as I keep saying, it's about changing our perception of who we are in this creative process and who we are in the universe and who we are as an expense, an extension of spirit itself. I like to think of human beings as extensions of the life that knows itself to be and allows it to take itself to take a myriad of forms, a spectacular display of diversity. God is being everything, in other words, in religious language. Um, Okay, so the law, I think of it as the feminine aspect of life, that aspect of the field of potential or consciousness that acts as fertile soil for ideas. So you can relate this to uh, the gestation period of a, of a baby, an embryo, that, that field or that womb 
is a seed is dropped into it, if you will. Same with the soil that produces the plant. And so there's the, the, the feminine in the physical form grows the fetus into a living human being. Now, we don't know how to do it. We just did it. I did it twice, didn't know how to do it. <laughs> You're just like, okay, just have, have your way with me. I'll be the vehicle. Well, when we have a great idea or a new vision, or we're seeing things in a new way, that tends to act as a seed planted in the soil of this creative mind that works through us by means of us. And it nurtures that idea, it gestates that idea into a full-blown living human experience. And it starts to happen in more than one way. And it gets, it, synchronicity kicks in and, and we start to uh, see the evidence of it in many different places or it comes to us through many different avenues. Now this is, this is a little detail that we often overlook um, that our desires have beliefs attached to them. Heal me now of my unbelief. See, if we have a desire that's not coming true, then we're placing it outside of us, for one thing. That's one thing we're doing that we need to correct. We're probably not feeling that it's already so in us. That's, this is the little detail. The, the desire itself is coming from the idea itself. It's prompting us to let it out. As I think I said that last week. I, don't, I can't remember what I say every week. <laughs> I think it was Sunday at the center. I said, if God could talk to you, the only thing it would say is, let me out. <laughs> Give me. You are the vehicle for the extension of what spirit is in this life. Give it something to do, right? Um, okay, so... Electricity is a law, it, it, it acts on principle, it acts according to a law, and you don't have to believe in it to use it, but you do, well, I guess you do, I'll take that back. You have to believe that electricity is real, because it was on the planet long before we discovered it, until someone said, How, what, what is this lightning thing? What is this energy, this power that lights, you know? And uh, we've discovered electricity, electromagnetism, and everything that goes with it. But it doesn't play favorites. It's a principle. So that if you handle it correctly, it'll produce the results you want. It'll light up your room, or it'll cook your food, or it'll warm your house, right? Okay. Well, the law of creating your desires into human form and experience is, acts in the same way. It acts in the way of, um, you know, you could even think of it as kind of a beautiful angel, that she takes your idea and grows it within the field, and then it comes through us. Now, what happens in the growth stage? If your idea is firmly implanted in the soil of your consciousness, what's going to happen in the growth stage? You're going to change. It just as a, a, a woman's body changes when she's pregnant, and boy, does it change. Well, so do we. It's we're, we are required to have a new vision about what's happening when a great idea is growing within us because you can't stay the same and have a new experience. That's that old Einstein quote. You know, doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results is the f definition of insanity. <laughs> it's just the definition of ignorance, right? The ignorance of the law, right? So we're going to take a little pause because we got some com some sponsors that want to say a word or two uh, to you, and so when we come back, we're going to talk a little more about our personal identity and the role it plays in our belief system. It's very important. So hang in there, come back. We won't be gone long. <laughs>
This is a national health care alert from the Health Hotline. If you, a family member, or a loved one suffers from knee pain and have Medicare as your primary insurance, we've got great news. You could qualify for a pain-relieving knee brace at little or no cost to you. Get free delivery, and all the paperwork is handled by our accredited suppliers at no charge to you. We also have other pain-relieving braces available for shoulder, ankle, and your back. Call the number on your screen right now to immediately receive a pain-relieving brace at little or no cost. Everybody wants cheap airfare, but where do you find it? You call low-cost airlines. They specialize in cheap flights, discount hotel rooms, cheap car rental rates, and with the best price guarantee. If you want the lowest prices on your airline tickets or other travel services, call now. That's right, call. That's the only way to get these rates. Experts are standing by 24-7 to get you the cheapest airfare and hotel rates available. So don't wait. Call now. Friend, do you remember when it felt good to withdraw your cash from the bank to expand a business, go on vacation, or buy a new car? Well, today, withdrawing your own cash has become a very risky business. According to the secret war, banks are now required to spy on us for the government and then report any suspicious or unusual behavior. I suggest you get the secret war free. Call the number on your screen or visit online. All right, we're back. And if you're just joining us, well, we've been talking about a variety of things today, always about how to make our life better, to be happier, healthier, wealthier, wiser, having more fun, and loving our life. And today we're talking about getting a new vision, a new perception of what is happening. And we've also been talking about the, the, the old-fashioned way of prayer, which is asking God to do something for us or bring something to us. And the 21st century scientific version, which we call spiritual mind treatment, which is a declaration of what is so spiritually and healing us of our unbelief. All right. So let's get really basic now. Let's say you want a loving relationship. Well, a lot of people do. You know, they're just still looking for that one person, that soulmate, or, and they got a list of the qualities of that person. <laughs> And, you know, they're checking it twice and uh, they're praying to God to have that person show up. And that is exactly the wrong way to do it. Because if we want something desperately and we don't have it, we need to heal our unbelief. You know, we need to check what we're looking at when we look at relationships. <clears throat> it's, it's not really judgment. This is the law. Um, if we have an old belief that good relationships don't really ever happen, that they always end badly, uh, that they bring trouble into our life. Uh, maybe we don't know we believe that, but that doesn't mean we can't change it. If you don't have what you want, you've got a belief about it that's prohibiting it from coming through you. It's that simple. It's not anything else. There's no such thing as a punishing God or a rewarding God. There is the creative process that is replete with love and intelligence, and it brings things through us on the avenue of this consciousness, this atmosphere of beliefs and perceptions. And that's why we're talking about getting a new vision today. It all starts with how we see things, especially with how we see ourselves, but also with how we see the, un the invisible laws that support this. And anyway, it's called the law of co-creation or the law of mind, and it's infallible, okay? So if you want to change a belief, let's, we're talking about love relationships, begin right now, and today, this is the, 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 not the first day of the rest of your life, it's the only day you're alive, right here, right now, right? Declare that relationships are wonderful, that love is everywhere, that you are in joyful, loving relationship with the perfect partner for you. And, you know, I said this Sunday, if, if you really start working on self-love and self-regard and self-respect and self-worth, and you really build that up, you may find it wasn't the relationship you wanted at all except the one you got, which is with yourself, which makes everything better. And if you still want a partner in your life, that's a different matter then you can choose one, but they won't give you love. Dee! 
I'm sorry. They don't. They can't. You have, it has to be active in you. Love <laughs> responds to love. <laughs> and it's just like joy responds to joy. And peace, you know, they, no one can give it to us. They reflect what's in us. That's so key, and it's so liberating to know that. All we have to do is work on ourselves. So the new vision we're looking for today is a perception of who we are in this grand and glorious universe, a new vision about how things happen, and the laws that support the creative process. It's that simple. All right, so <laughs> we always go back to who do I think I am in this life that I am living? And as I said at the top, uh, there's little tools and techniques you can use and to practice being present because when you're really present now, now think about this when you're really present now in this moment there is no past or future when you're really present like a child like a little kid two years old is really present they're not thinking about yesterday or tomorrow I remember when I was <laughs> about three, I asked my mother, what's an hour? <laughs> she said, well, it's, it's, she couldn't really tell me. <laughs> it's uh, 60 minutes. I said, what's a minute? You know, children are present. They don't have any sense of the passing of time until they get a little bit older. And then it's like Christmas will never come, you know. Uh, <laughs> but when they're little, and that's what we're going for. It's, I want you to really think about this. When you are really really here there's nothing but you and who you know yourself to be you will feel the love you will feel joy you will feel peace because it's it's you that's who you are you see and so that's all you can experience ever is yourself and so prayer then asking for something to happen out there is a very old paradigm. It's, uh, I'm not going to say it's wrong. I'm saying it's not very effective. If it were, everybody's prayers would be answered all the time. That isn't how it works. The answer is within. The, the, the answer to the prayer is in the one praying. You see, we're not trying to change God's mind. We're trying to change our mind. Heal me now of my unbelief. Remember that. All right. So, there's no one up there, of course. That doesn't mean there isn't a responsiveness in the universe, because there is. Um, but imagine if electricity only worked if we gained its favor. Oh, that would be horrible, wouldn't it? <laughs> it's like, okay, the lights are not coming on tonight because I guess God doesn't like me anymore. Or electricity doesn't like me. I did something to offend electricity. Mm, come on. Uh, the universe couldn't run like that. So. The presence that we call God, and it has many names. It doesn't really matter what you call it. There is a presence. Um, it's a function of the creative process. It is pure intelligence, and it is live, alive, alive, quivering, in a field of pure love. Nothing, nothing but love. All right? So it responds to individualized intelligence and... It responds to love, and it thinks, I'm putting this in human language because it's not a separate entity thinking, but it, you might say that the law assumes we know what we're doing when we're using it, right? So if we have a lot of energy around something, it assumes we love it because it only operates on love. It only operates, <laughs> it gives us what we love. But it doesn't have any negativity in itself. It has doesn't, it doesn't no sense of up and down and all that. Uh, <laughs> this is tricky business, but you think about it, it makes total sense. Um, it operates love, responding to love. So anything that's energized in us is, according to God, love. Something we love because we're giving our full attention to it. We're giving our consciousness to it. We're giving our very being to it. We must be in love with it, right? This, this is good. You know, this really is why what you're thinking about tends to come about and how powerful we really are. Oh, well, let's, let's put it this way, how empowered we really are. When I talk about power, I'm talking about internal power, not external power. And I'm talking about the kind of power that makes us harmless, benevolent, 
loving, kind, compassionate people because we're in charge of our own life and we're not threatened by anybody else because we know they can't take anything from us. That which belongs with me cannot be taken from me because that which belongs with me came to me by right of my consciousness. Nobody can take it. There's no threat out there. I, that, I, can, I get chills when I say those things because it's so true. This, this, this way of seeing things has just transformed my life and continues to. I'm still working on myself. I still have areas of my life where I need to heal my unbelief, but I know how to do it. And I want you to know how to do it, too. So at the Center for Spiritual Living, the Mesilla Valley Center for Spiritual Living, we teach this. Uh, we offer classes that are coming up in the fall. And I'll tell you more about that as the weeks go by. Um, but there are classes in the science and art of using your mind to bring about what your heart desires, okay? On Sunday, we get together at 10.30 at the Mesilla Community Center, great little place to meet. And I do a talk like this. We have some discussion afterwards. If You, you don't have to participate unless you want. And we have some refreshments. And, that, and we do a little meditation. Everybody needs a little meditation. Um, so join us on Sunday morning at 10.30. Now, you can also tell your friends about this. I know this is a, this is a local channel, and we're really lucky to have it uh, here in uh, Las Cruces, New Mexico. But if you know people elsewhere who could benefit from this information that I'm sharing, tell them to get on YouTube and just search Carol Carnes, New Mexico, or Carol Carnes Living Consciously, or the Las Cruces channel, You'll get these shows, and yeah, I'm, people are watching them in Canada, they're watching them in California, and everywhere. And people are giving me some good feedback. They're, it's making a difference. It's helping them. All right, so get on our website. Uh, there it is, <laughs> mvcsl.org. Make a donation. We are a nonprofit organization. We cherish your donations, and thank you in advance for them. In the meantime, you just stay tuned in to what wants to happen. Remember, something wonderful is always trying to happen. Until we meet again, peace and blessings.